Right, good evening boys and girls. It's Mr. Sibanyuni with you again and it's the 23rd of September and we are continuing with Technical Sciences Grade 12 and we are still doing organic reactions. Now on Monday and Tuesday we actually went through the the organic reactions and we actually looked at how uh, these homologous series react which are your alkanes your alkenes your haloalkanes as well as your alcohols so we're able to grasp all of that and furthermore we went and we talked about another type of reaction which is polymerization and that marked the end of the theory behind organic reactions so for today what we are going to do is we are going to treat questions from previous examination question papers and that is where we are basically going to concretize our knowledge of organic reactions and remember this section is very important for example those that have not as yet written their preparatory examination you need to know that uh, organic chemistry overall it will count 85 marks and this section on, orga uh, on organic reactions will be plus minus 29 marks so a very important section so let us concretize our knowledge and see if we've really grasped the theory behind organic reactions by doing the questions from previous examination papers so just our lesson overview uh, we are basically just going to revert back for less than a minute uh, what we are required to know as per the examination guidelines and we are going to learn these reactions by doing questions and also a couple of definitions that we are getting from these particular uh, questions we have to learn them and see if we remember them and I will give you also a couple of tips on how to approach this particular topic when you prepare for examination as well as when you are in the examination room so you will remember again what we actually looked into when we we're looking at reactions of organic compounds we looked at a different type of reaction that we call combustion which is also called oxidation and that's where we looked at how hydrocarbons react uh, with excess oxygen and you will recall that it produces carbon dioxide and water and then we moved to do addition reactions and that is where we were reacting alkenes and we looked at different types of additions, which is your hydrohalogenation, your halogenation, your hydration, as well as your hydrogenation. So we looked at four different types of addition reactions. So when we do questions, we'll see the questions encompasses these different types of addition reactions, and we must be able to pick them up. As, as a, a given type of addition reaction. Furthermore, using structural formulae uh, and equations, writing down equations, including reaction conditions as well, we did the reaction of haloalkanes and we looked at the substitution reaction that haloalkanes undergo. And we went further to talk about that type of substitution, which is hydrolysis. And then uh, in this section as well, we talked about the reaction conditions that must be met in order for our haloalkanes to undergo substitution. Then we looked at how a hydrohalogen, a halogen that is bonded to a hydrogen, how does it react with alcohols in order to produce molecules that belong to the homologous series haloalkanes? And we also looked at substitution of alkanes uh, when your alkanes react with halogens. Then again, we looked at plastics and polymers. And there we learned all these definitions. We learned how to define the term macromolecule, the term polymer, 
the term monomer. Uh, another term which is polymerization. And the last term that we learned here was how to define the term plastic. Furthermore, we know that uh, with our polymers, we learned a, a polymer that we call polyethylene. And we know the monomer for polyethylene, it's actually called ethene. So we learned about that. And we discussed the industrial uses of polyethylene. And remember that I said, we can basically ask you for two um, uses, at least two uh, uses of, of polyethylene. So those are the things that we, we need to be able to do. And that is exactly what the examination guidelines is telling us. So we shoot straight to questions. Now, let us look at this particular diagram. It reads as follows. The diagram below shows, just getting my pen there. The diagram below shows how ethene can be converted into other organic compounds. The letters A, B, C, D, and E represent different organic reactions. So remember what I always tell you, my dear learners. After you have been given a scenario there, you have to look at your diagram and see that whatever has been written there in the scenario, it's exactly or more so what you see on that particular diagram. So we are being told that ethene can be converted into other organic compounds. So I can already just look there. This molecule that is right in the middle, I can see that the molecule is definitely ethene. And this ethene is undergoing different types of reactions and it gives me different organic molecules. And we've been told, and we can see that these letters have been bolded and written in capital letters to show emphasis on them and to say that uh, they represent different organic reactions. In other words, when you look at A, B, C, D, and E, you are looking at various types of organic reactions and you must be able to actually just work them out to see how they have moved from ethene, perhaps to ethane, from ethene to compound Y, and so on and so on, as per this particular diagram. Now, my dear learners, you can really expect that at the end of the year, somehow in organic reactions, you must be able to expect a flow diagram together you must be expecting a diagram like this one and you must be able to detect how a particular reactant which is an organic reactant has been converted into a, a particular organic product now you will remember that in a flow diagram when we give you a question we are not compelled to show you all the substances that are reacting because the idea here is for us to actually see if you can correctly determine how a particular reaction takes place in terms of all the reactants that are required for that reaction all the products that are going to be produced in that particular reaction and lastly the reaction conditions that must be uh, adhered to in order for that particular reaction to take place. And remember, we talked about this. I told you that when we deal with organic reactions, we will use the code RCP. And we know that it will remind us to always include the reactants to always include the conditions which we will write either on top of the arrow or just beneath the arrow, as well as the products. So my dear learners, I need you to know this, that in a flow diagram, we will never show you all the reactants. We will not necessarily show you all the products because 
we want you to be able to determine if there's a reactant that is missing there we want to ask you questions on that we want to see if you are able to determine if there is a reactant that is missing there and also in your products we want you to be able to determine if there's another product that is missing furthermore we also want to test you if you remember the reaction conditions and therefore you must be able to check given a particular reaction like a are all the reactants shown if not you need to be able to give me the other reactant are all the products shown if not you need to show me the other product are the reaction conditions shown if not then you are required to show me the reaction conditions so let us basically analyze this particular diagram and make some notes uh, that will help us in actually answering the questions that follow so i want us to first look at reaction a if you look at reaction a what has actually happened here is that ethane or rather ethene remember this molecule it's ethene and you can ask yourself why are we saying this molecule is ethene and i know by now you know very well why the molecule is called ethene we look at the number of carbon atoms which form the longest chain without breaking what we refer to as the parent chain so i can see that it has two carbons in other words, the name is going to start with the prefix if. And then I can see that I don't have substituents. Again, I can see that I have a double bond between carbon and carbon atoms. So that tells me that the molecule belongs to the homologous series alkenes. And if it belongs to the homologous series alkenes, we then know that the name will end with the suffix there E-N-E. -E. So the complete name of this molecule is ethene, which is the ethene that they are referring to there. Then ethene undergoes this type of reaction and it forms ethane. So we can actually draw for ourselves a structure. And the structure of ethane, we know that the F means two carbons. So there I will have two carbons. And because it ends with A and E, then I know the molecule belongs to alkanes. Then it tells me that I must have a single bond between carbon and carbon atom. And then the last thing that is left is to put my hydrogen so that around each carbon we have four bonds. So this is our molecule there, which is ethane then we need to go further and ask ourselves what type of a reaction actually took place here now you can see that to go from this which is the reactant i'll show it with an r and to have p as your product then it tells me that from the reactant to the product, a double bond has been broken. Now, if a double bond breaks, we know that the type of reaction is definitely addition. In other words, A represents a reaction or a type of reaction that we call addition. Why are we saying that? Because in the reactants, we started with a molecule that has a double bond but in the product we no longer have a molecule with a double bond we have a molecule that has a single bond between carbon and carbon atoms and therefore that molecule is an alkene so double bond has been broken if you check again on this carbon as well as on this carbon around there we didn't have hydrogens because when we look at this molecule this carbon had two hydrogens this carbon had two hydrogens but now when you check this carbon has one two three hydrogens this other carbon also has one two three hydrogens 
What does this mean? It means that we added hydrogens there. And in particular, we see that I added one hydrogen and I added another hydrogen. And for the mere fact that I added two hydrogen atoms shows me that I have performed an addition reaction. Now, what else can we see here? We can definitely see that our molecule, when it was still a reactant, there were two carbons and four hydrogens. But in the product, I have two carbons and six hydrogens. In other words, this chemical reaction is not balanced. And to balance it, I need to add two hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side all together. So if I had two hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, which is basically your hydrogen gas, then the molecule is balanced because the number of carbons on the left is then equal to the number of carbons on the right. The number of hydrogens on the left is equal to the number of hydrogens on the right. So this particular equation is chemically balanced. Then I can ask you again, what type of an addition reaction is this? Then you can see that I added two hydrogen atoms. In other words, I added hydrogen gas. So the type of addition is then going to be called hydrogenation. Right, so I'm going to call that hydrogenation. So that is the type of addition because it explains what I have added. Then you will remember that if the type of addition is hydrogenation, then you will require platinum as a catalyst. So we will write that catalyst on top of the arrow. Otherwise, even if it's not platinum, you could actually use palladium and you could actually use nickel. So any of the three is okay. So I've decided that we will use platinum as a catalyst. Right, that is reaction A. Then let us look at reaction B. When you look at reaction B, we can see that ethene is now reacting with HBr. Now, if ethene reacts with HBr, what does it tell me? It tells me that the double bond on ethene is going to be broken, and around there, I will either add an H, and on the other carbon, I will add a Br. Or on this carbon, I will add a Br. On the other carbon, I will add an H. But you see, where we add the Br and the H, it doesn't matter because if I add the Br on this carbon on the left, this will still be carbon one. If I decide to add the Br on the carbon on, that is on the right hand side, this will still be carbon one. So it doesn't matter where we add the Br. So my molecule will then, because I want to add the H and the Br, it means the double bond must be broken. So I will have single bond between carbon and carbon atoms. Then what I will do is I will add, rather, I will keep those hydrogens that were there. So I can see that now after breaking the double bond, then this carbon has three, rather three bonds, one, two, three bonds. This carbon also has one, two, three bonds. So I am short of one bond there, one bond there. And that is where I'm going to add my Br, which is my bromine atom. And on the other carbon, I'm going to add the hydrogen. So I have added my HBr. And my molecule is correct because I have two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right. Five hydrogens on the left, one, two, three, four, five. Or rather, let me put it this way, five hydrogens in the reactants. One bromine in the reactants, one bromine in the reactants. So it is chemically balanced. Then I can see that the double bond has been broken. So I also know that the type of reaction is addition. But if I ask you for the type of addition because I added a hydrogen and a bromine, 
In other words, I added a hydrogen and a halogen. So the type of addition there, we will say it is hydro halogenation. So the type of addition there will be called hydro halogenation. And then we remember that, okay, it's reactant, it's product, we are fine. So our conditions there, remember I told you that every time, every time that we have anything that has to do with halogenation as well, you just remember that you require an inert solvent or some of you can then call it an unreactive solvent, right? I just want to do this and you will see why I'm doing this because I want to just make it easy for you, but just know that it doesn't matter, right? So I will put the hydrogen there and then I will put the BR there, right? Now we check again, my dear learners, that we want to do reaction E. Now, if I want to do reaction E, it means I am taking a haloalkane and I am going to form an alcohol. Now we know, my dear learners, particularly for our syllabus, that the reactions of haloalkanes that we are dealing with, it's simply substitution. So to go from this to that, via reaction E. All I can see is that where I had a BR, it is now an OH altogether. So where I had a BR, it is now an OH. So what does that tell me? It tells me that for reaction E, I need a molecule that will give me an OH, which will substitute the, hal rather the halogen there. And therefore, it means I need to have compound Y right okay just getting my pen there there we go so I'm going to need Y which is this compound but it needs to react with a water molecule so we know that I told you that it's always best if you just show that a water molecule it's actually H as well as OH. So what you will then see is that in this reaction then, the OH is then going to be brought there and substitute the bromine atom, substitute the halogen. So after you do that, the OH will then attach the and hence you have that molecule altogether. But what else are you going to be left with? Another product that is going to form is the H there that you did not use and the BR. So it will give you plus HBR. So it means HBR is also going to be another product altogether. But that is then for reaction so it will definitely be another product. Right. Then we check again, my dear learners, that, okay, this product that I have actually formed there is classified as an inorganic product. And why are we saying it's an inorganic product? Because I can definitely see there that it does not contain a carbon. So if it doesn't contain a carbon atom, then it is definitely a, an inorganic product. And then if you check on this one, then we can see that the HOH, which is the water molecule, is a reactant because it's reacting with compound Y. And therefore, this is another inorganic reactant that is needed for this particular reaction. So what you can actually learn from this flow diagram is that we are adding a lot of products that were not shown on the flow diagram. We are showing the reactants that were not shown 
on this particular flow diagram, we are also showing the reaction conditions that have not been shown on this particular flow diagram. As a result, my dear learners, it compels us uh, to actually try and work out exactly what is happening here so that when you go and answer the questions, it then becomes easy for you to spot down the answers. And it also gives you good practice in terms of uh, remembering what is required of organic reactions. Then I want us to look at reaction C. If I look at, or rather, let us quickly go back there to reaction E and just concretize everything else. Again, if they ask me, because I can see that the bromine atom has been replaced by a hydroxyl group, then that replacement there, or what we call substitution, is then the type of reaction that is taking place. So if they ask me what type of reaction is taking place there, I will simply say the type of reaction there is substitution. Furthermore, if they ask me what type of substitution, remember now for your syllabus, you only deal with one type of substitution. So the answer is always going to be hydrolysis. Your answer is going to be hydrolysis. So the type of reaction that is taking place here, it's substitution and the type of substitution that is taking place here, it's hydrolysis. And remember, the prefix there, hydro, always means that something is, or rather a compound is reacting with water. And that is why we say the type of substitution is hydrolysis, but the type of reaction is actually substitution. Now, what does this remind me of again? It reminds me that it is a reaction of a haloalkane, and I need to remember the conditions. And the conditions for reactions of haloalkanes to undergo substitution. Firstly, we need excess water. Secondly, we need mild heat. Altogether, we need mild heat. Furthermore, we need a dilute strong base. But in this case, we used water and therefore we don't necessarily need a dilute strong base. But still, we could be asked, what if we used a dilute strong base? Then we would then be able to, to work with that out together. Then we look at another reaction there, which is C. Now with C, what we can see, my dear learners, is that my reactant is ethene and my product there is called ethanol. And I'm sure, my dear learners, you know why this molecule is called ethanol. Why? Because it has two carbons, so it's F, and remember we add the AN. And because it is an alcohol, then the name must end with all. So the name of this organic compound or the IUPAC name of this organic compound is then called ethanol. Right. So what has actually happened here? My reactant is ethene. My product is ethanol. In other words, the double bond has been broken. To go from this reactant, which is an alkene with a double bond, to go to an alcohol which does not have a double bond and it has a hydroxyl group, then I can see the double bond has been broken. So if I am asked what type of a reaction is C, then I'm simply going to say the type of reaction for C is 
addition because I can see the double bond has been broken. Again, how do I see that it's addition? This carbon, when it was a reactant, it had two hydrogens. But now when it is a product, it has three hydrogens. So one hydrogen has been added there. On this carbon, it had two hydrogens. But now when it is a product, it has two hydrogens as well as a hydroxyl group. So that also shows me that I have done addition. Then I can see that I added the hydrogen and I added an OH. So clearly I have added water all together. So if I have added water, it shows me that there I added water. So it means there must be an H as well as an OH all together. Then I ask you, what type of addition is this one? For the mere fact that my dear learners, you have added water, it means the type of addition reaction that is taking place there, we then call it hydration. The type of addition there is called hydration. And remember what I said, that at some point I've come across a learner that says that is alteration. I actually loved, but you know, I could see that the learner was able to actually pick up that we are adding water, but remember alteration is not a word that exists. The correct word there is definitely hydration. So that is the type of addition. So what can we see there, my dear learners, is that we have an inorganic reactant that has not been shown for reaction C, and it becomes our duty to do that. Lastly, what did I say to you? When you produce an alcohol molecule, you actually need to provide heat and you need to ensure that you use sulfuric acid as a catalyst and its chemical formula is H2SO4. So these are the reaction conditions that are required in order for this molecule to form an alcohol altogether. So really a very nice question to remind you of everything that we learned on Monday and Tuesday. Now, when we go to D, we can see that we have ethene and it forms a polymer. So firstly, if I ask you for the type of reaction, you will say to me, Menier, the type of reaction there is called polymerization. Why are we saying it is polymerization? Because when we define the term polymerization, we say it is a chemical reaction in which monomers join to form a polymer. So I can see that there I'm taking ethene and I'm forming a polymer. Now, what does this mean? If my ethene is reacting there, it's definitely going to form a polymer. In other words, ethene is the monomer because you know that to form a polymer, you require many monomers to join covalently to each other, to bond covalently to each other in a repeating pattern. So ethene is my monomer. Now, if many ethenes bond to each other, we know that the polymer that I'm going to form is definitely going to be called polyethene, literally uh, translating to many ethenes. So this will be poly ethene altogether and that will be the polymer so ethene is the monomer and polyethene is the polymer the type of reaction that is taking place is polymerization furthermore what can we learn we can actually say this polymer is actually an addition polymer and why is it an addition polymer? Because when ethenes 
which are the monomers covalently bond to each other in a repeating pattern, the double bond breaks. So if the double bond breaks, we know it's addition. And because it's a polymer, it means polyethylene is an example of an addition polymer. And lastly, for interest sake, and if we are asked, remember you must know at least two uses of polyethylene. And I told you when you write it down, you must say, <coughs> excuse me, it is used to make plastic products like plastic bottles. And lastly, it is used to make bulletproof vests. So that is in a nutshell what we have learned over the week. Now let us go straight to the questions. We are required in 4.1 to write down the type of addition reaction represented by A. So, okay, for 4.1.1, it's A, and for 4.1.2, it's C. So we want the type of addition reactions. And I can tell you that we have already worked that out. So the type of addition reaction for A, we can see that it is hydrogenation. Why? Because we added hydrogen gas. And for C, the type of addition is hydration why because we added a water molecule so our answer there for a is definitely hydrogenation good and then the answer to reaction c i can definitely say that it is hydration right then we go to question 4.2 it reads consider reaction a write down the name or formula of the it means you can either give the name or you can give the formula of the following for reaction a we need to give them the inorganic reactant needed and we need to give them the catalyst that is needed. So let us go to A. A, the inorganic reactant that is needed. I can see that I needed H2, which is the one that they did not show me. And then for the catalyst, I need platinum or palladium or nickel. In other words, to answer there, if I were to give a name i would have said it is the inorganic reactant that is needed it is hydrogen gas and then uh, if i were to give its formula then i would have said it's h2 you don't say it's h and remember this is hydrogen gas the catalyst needed if i had to give the formula I would have either said platinum or palladium, which is PD, capital letter P, small letter D, or nickel, which is capital letter N, small letter I. Or if I were to give the names, it would simply be platinum or it would have been palladium palladium or i would have just said nickel right so any of those is correct because it's a name or a formula then the next question we must consider reaction b and we must write down the type of reaction of which it is an example and the IUPAC name of compound Y. So, for the type of reaction, we definitely know that the type of reaction there is addition. Because I started with my reactant having a double bond and I ended with my product only having single bonds. And I also added an H and a BR, which were not there. So it is 
addition and the name of compound Y, I can see that I have two carbon atoms. So this is an if, and it's a haloalkane, so it ends with A and E. And I can see that on carbon number one, I have bromine. So it will be bromoethane because it's one bromine and it's on carbon number one. So I'll just say bromo because even if it was there, it would still be bromo. And then for the longest chain, there is definitely F and it ends with A and E. So the name there will be bromoethane. So to answer the question there, I'm going to say the type of reaction is definitely addition. And then for the type of addition, rather for the IUPAC name, I will simply call that bromoethane. Right, so that is going to be bromoethane. If because it had two carbons, a and E because it's a haloalkane, they end with A and E, and bromo because it's on carbon one and it will always be on carbon one. Right? Then reaction D represents a polymerization reaction. We are required to define the term polymerization. And we say polymerization firstly, we can see it's a chemical reaction in which monomers join covalently to form polymers, right? Or to form a polymer. It is a chemical reaction, firstly, in which monomers join to form polymers. So that is the definition that you would provide there. Then we must write down the IUPAC name of the monomer used in reaction D, then the IUPAC name of the polymer, and the structural formula of the polymer, right? So the IUPAC name of the monomer, the small organic molecule, it's ethene. The name of the polymer, it's polyethene, all together. And then we must draw the structure of polyethene, right? So, the IUPAC name of the monomer, we definitely know that the monomer is ethene. And then the IUPAC name of the polymer, it is polyethene. And the structural formula of the polymer, remember polyethene, you will represent it with two carbons. And then you will show your bonds there. You can then show your hydrogens. So there you cannot show the hydrogens. Why? Because, okay, that is a bracket. Because now the chain is actually long with more carbons going to the left and it's very extremely long with more carbons going to the right and then you're going to put an and there then for question 4.5 they say reaction e represents a hydrolysis reaction right remember it's a type of substitution write down two reaction conditions needed for these reactions for that particular reaction. So remember that I told you that for substitution of haloalkanes, we require mild heat and we also require excess water. So our answer there will be mild heat plus excess, in fact, and excess water and excess water. So that is essentially the two conditions that must be met altogether. So that essentially, my dear learners, brings us to the end of our lesson. And I just want to revert back here to tell you that 
when you practice at home, do not just do the questions altogether, right? Why shouldn't you just do the questions? Because there is a lot that you can actually learn from this by just practicing on your own and actually checking if you can recall. So don't just look at the diagram and strictly go to the answers. Analyze the flow diagram first, see what you can remember. If you can't remember, go back to your notes. Uh, if you don't understand your notes, go back to your teacher at school or send me questions as well so that I'm able to assist you in this particular uh, questions and interpretation of these particular diagrams because that is how learning takes place. From what we did here, you saw that when we went to answer the questions, we actually just went and uh, picked up the answers from what we have actually learned. So it becomes very easy for you. So you won't be getting the same flow diagram. As a result, don't just attempt questions. Use it to learn and remember everything that you were supposed to learn. And that is essentially the tips that I wanted to give you. And tomorrow, we will be doing more questions on this particular flow diagram and perhaps even more questions uh, depending on the time that we have and basically i've alluded to the tips there on how you can expect these questions to be in a flow diagram as well and be able to interpret it and this section is going to be plus minus 29 marks all together so thank you very much for tuning in and i hope to definitely see you in fact uh, on friday tomorrow it's a holiday so we are not in you can also just take some time off and uh, between six and seven but you get busy throughout the day uh, with your studies so i'll see you tomorrow or rather i'll see you again on friday and we will be continuing with organic reactions thank you very much and goodbye